first uh, general uh, graduate summer program is uh, halfway through. Right. Uh, how, you, how was it uh, compared to your expectations? Oh, I think it's exceeded our expectations. I, when we started uh, a, a few months ago, we really had no idea how this would evolve, and we weren't sure even whether 40 students would even arrive. So that was a major question that we had. And so that uh, the, the students did indeed arrive. We've had the first few weeks of core lectures, uh, and it's gone phenomenally well. The quality of the lectures and the quality of the content has been incredible. The 40 students that we picked out of the applicant pool of 1,200 uh, turned out to be phenomenal, and we've got an extraordinary bunch. Um, the, these are folks who are, who are um, incredibly expert in one or two fields and have an expressed interest in global issues, which is exactly the kind of people that we're looking to reach. Um, and they will kind of take the content and the understanding that they have learned this summer and take it out into the real world with them. So that's been, it's gone very, very well so far. What were your major uh, fears, apart from not having students that did not materialize? I think one, you know, there's a huge challenge that we're facing, which is uh, we've got a nine-week program. We have ten very broad topics, and we're trying to achieve uh, a, a reasonable amount of depth with, with ten topics, each of which could, you could take uh, spend a year on. Uh, and people do PhD theses on little, little aspects of each one of them. How do you deliver... Uh, in a nine-week program, adequate depth with the breadth that we're attempting. That was our biggest curricular challenge. Uh, and I think we've achieved it, thus far at least, I think we've achieved it very well. There were the, the, the experts in each of their fields uh, was, uh, was very open, and the students asked very, very pointed and penetrating questions, and we l reached a deep level of discussion around many of the topics that I think will yield very good results. Any positive surprise that you want to record? Um, well, in one uh, uh, lecture on finance and entrepreneurship, one of the students uh, registered a domain name, um, bought some Google keywords against that domain uh, name, started marketing it, and started generating revenue for his little business by the end of the lecture. And that was just, that was quite an extraordinary thing to watch. And in general, the group is operating in that way. Uh, we have, they come back with feedback. We, we do feedback sessions regularly. We've changed the lecture format a little bit to adapt. Uh, they're asking for late night sessions so they can get more content and get to know each other. They've self-organized to give presentations to each other in the evenings, which has turned out to be phenomenally successful. So a lot of interesting little constructs have come out of this. So uh, what do you see going forward in the next years, next year and forward? Um, <laughs> well, it'll be a little easier to answer after the, the, in the next four and a half weeks, but I think um, we're clearly, I think we're on to something very successful. I think what will be interesting is to see the kinds of ideas that come out of this that address global issues. Because one of the observations we've made is that whether you think about global issues today in terms of the financial crisis or in terms of pandemics and, and swine flu, or, um, or even arguably climate change, they're all rooted in exponentials and, expo and accelerating factors. And our leadership today, globally, whether p business or political, does not have a good understanding and a good handle on these exponential and accelerating uh, factors. So this new uh, uh, group of people who will be the next generation of leaders with or without us, at least have a good sense of it. Now, how do we get that out into the world and get a better understanding of that? Because more and more technologies are reaching information enablement and reaching an exponential growth curve. Uh, for example, medicine, now that we've mapped the genome, is essentially an exponentially growing field. Um, solar energy is just reaching that point. So as more and more uh, industries, as more and more domains become information enabled and go into hyper growth, how do you manage all of that? And that's something we'll see more of. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.